if uh, I do a photo shoot with uh, some of my friends, how do you charge them? I mean, isn't it awkward to say a price? Today is Q&A Wednesday. If you haven't followed me on Instagram at Hados underscore Pedersen, then definitely do that because if you do that, you can send me a video of you asking a question and I can get back to you in videos like today. So let's get into it. What do you think about gimbals versus steady cams? So, do you use one type? What do you prefer over the other? Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, also, thank you so much for being an inspiration to all 700,000 of us. I think that's what your YouTube number is right now. <laughs> and, uh, dude, just keep on doing what you're doing, man. We love you, bro. See ya. Thanks, dude. Thanks for the message. I much prefer glide cams, but that's just because like my shooting is like a really run and gun and I don't have time to like set up all the gimbals and like do all the weight adjustments and stuff like that. When I have the glide cam, I can just put it on it and like have that like the weight set at the start of the day. Then that's all set and I can film with that for the rest of the day. But if you're doing professional shoots, I would say gimbals. How old were you when you first got paid for photography? Maybe 16. Morning peeps, uh, just wondering why you still have a Sony and not something like a Canon EOS R with a flippy screen. Just curious. Just curious, mate. You know what's the real question? I wonder why you don't have a Sony with a non-flippy dippy whippy screen. That, that's that's what I reckon. Vlogging on the A7S, the only downside to it is not having a flip screen, but I have used it I have used it to my advantage because like the fact that it doesn't have a flip screen means that I don't like get distracted by looking at myself. So I'm just looking directly at the lens, directly at you, which is actually really good. Like at the start, like when you're vlogging and stuff, you really want to see yourself, see if yourself is in focus and everything like that. See if you're looking good, but I, yeah, I just got used to not looking at myself. I guess the only downside is like the fact that like a lot of my footage can be out of focus sometimes and that does really annoy me, especially as a photographer and filmmaker, you want the thing to be in focus. I love your work, it actually inspires me to go out and do more um, things with photography and my camera that I have. And I know you've been to Cali a bunch of times, you know, and you've been to New York, like a little bit around the US and stuff like that, but if you come to Cali again, um, I was wondering if you would ever come see this uh, this town called Fresno. It has this amazing national park. It's called Yosemite, and oh. I don't know if you've been there or not, but if you haven't, it'd be cool to you to come and see it, and it'd be cool if I could meet you, actually, and collab there in Yosemite and do, like, a little photo shoot or something. But I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. Legend, dude. I would love to go to Yosemite. The real question is, why have I not been there yet? Like the amount of times I actually go off to California and I haven't seen or been to Yosemite, what do you, what do you mean? I was having like a serious conversation with some photographers and I was like, have you ever been to Yosemite before? <laughs> Yosemite. I call it Yosemite in a serious meeting and they're just like looking, they looked at each other and then they looked at me and they're just like, the next time I go to California, message me if you see me like on my story that I'm in California and we can like sort out something. If I'm going to Yosemite, 100%, we can definitely collab there. Can you please have a look at my account and tell me what I'm doing wrong? Feel free to tell my mistakes to everybody watching. Thank you very much and I love your content. I can't really say a whole lot about it. Like you've just taken a photo of a dragonfly. I think that next time maybe like work on the composition because it looks kind of like it's not balanced at all. Flower. Like I think that like you're you're doing what I did when I started out in photography. When I found out about how you can change the depth of field and make a blurry background, I would always take photos and take videos of flowers. But everyone does it when they're like starting out. So that's absolutely fine. I think that, oh, this one's actually kind of cool with the bird. Like, I like that because you've got some nice depth with like the leaves and stuff, like out of focus and in focus and stuff. I really like this one. You could probably like work on the composition so that it's like either in the middle or like maybe towards the right third rather than like being too far on the right third. I would break it up into thirds. It's called the rule of thirds. You go like one, two, one, two. So it's like the frame is broken up into thirds. You don't need to, but it's just like a guideline. It can make the, the photo look a lot more balanced if you like go towards the rule of thirds and like just like place the subject on one of the thirds or in the third or. Yeah, this is another dragonfly. I like this one a lot more because it's like a lot more balanced and symmetrical. You've just got like the leading lines down the side and it's like you got like some nice bokeh. You like taking photos of animals and stuff, don't ya? Don't ya? 
Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, no, keep up the good work. Just work on the composition and um, go from there. Hi, Hayden. My name is Ruth and I'm from Angola. I'd like to know how can I find my editing style in photography? Don't worry about finding your style. Just go out and shoot. Have fun with it. It doesn't matter about your editing style. Who cares about your editing style? Just honestly, I, like, I'm, I'm serious. Just have fun. You don't find your style. Your style finds you. And your style finds you by you presenting your opportunity to find the style or your to find for the bleh, for the style to find you by having fun. Does that make sense? Probably not. For you to find your style, you have to go out and see what works and what you like. The only way that I found my style, I, I don't even see I freaking hate the word style because like Style sort of, to me, kind of like pigeonholes myself and it kind of makes me think, oh, well, I can't shoot this because it's not with my style. Who cares? Like, I like to shoot just all different kinds of stuff. Like, experiment, have fun with it. And like, that's, that is how you find your style. I don't know anything. There's so many like different styles of photography and filmmaking that I haven't tried before that I might absolutely love. That, but the only thing is, the only way that I'll realize that I love it is if I actually go out and do it. So, as the old man said, uh, do it. Have you ever visited Finland? By the way, I'm from Finland. Woody. <laughs> what did you say at the end? Woody. Woody. I haven't been to Finland and I, I've never actually looked into it, to be honest. I have a question if uh, I do a photo shoot with uh, some of my friends, how do you charge them? I mean, isn't it awkward to say a price? Wait, you're doing a photo shoot with your friends and you're gonna charge them? Okay, ah, right. well, it depends. If they're getting you to take photos for them, then you just straight up say like, look, like you're my friends and everything, but I also need to make a living somehow. So like, I'm gonna charge you this amount, but then like, just maybe like go easy on them. Don't like, don't like that. This is just what I would do. Like, if I was doing something for like a really close friend or whatever, I would do it for free straight up. I get what you mean. Like there's been times when people have like invited me Okay, yeah, actually, this is interesting. When I did event photography, like I would do events for all kinds of people, including my friends. And when I would take photos for my friends and stuff, I would like, if they were really close, I would do it for free. If they weren't as close, but I was still friends with them, I would give them like a discounted price of like maybe like a hundred dollars off or something. But like, it was interesting because being in the small country town of Warrigal, everyone knows you and you know everyone kind of thing. So you feel like you're, you're in this like massive like social circle. So I think that when people hear that you're gonna do like discounted prices for friends and stuff, I ended up getting invited to events when like I didn't really even know the people like that well. They invited me first like on Facebook and stuff. I was like, oh, that's nice. It's nice that I'm getting invited to this event and stuff. But then like a week out from the event, they're just like, oh, hey, and I was wondering if you can take photos for it, for the event. And I'm like, ah, oh, so that's the reason why you invited me in the first place. That's mint. I feel super loved. That's, that's fun. So people tried to like make it look like they were like my close friend so that they could get a discounted price on event photography. And I got, I, I did get good at like realizing. So you got to be wary of that. When it comes to friends, if they're really close, honestly, like just do it for free and do it for fun. That's what I would do. But if you really need the money, then your friends would appreciate that. And they would be like, look, like, yeah, I'm happy to help you out and stuff. You just ask them. Like, if they're not gonna be your friend because you're charging them money, then are they your real friend? You know what I mean? Your a real friend like loves you for who you are and like they'll understand your situation. All right, well, that's the end of the Q&A. If you like this video, maybe consider liking and subscribing. It's up to you. You know what to do. It was awesome hanging out with you again and I'll catch you next time. Yeah.